Hi, welcome back to my look at the game Six Fleet by Strategy and Tactics Magazine, published by Simulations Publications Incorporated, designed by James Dunnigan in 1975. What I'm going to be doing is going over the sequence of play, showing some examples of movement, combat, special rules, that type of thing. So, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to run through a quick example of movement and combat, although in the game, combat comes before movement. But this is just a simple, quick little demonstration of movement. And then we shall do a... Uh, show an example of combat. Alright. Movement is pretty simple. My handy dandy cheat sheet over here. Uh, if we can get it into frame here. That's a submarine unit. All right, you can see that in the upper right hand corner of the units there is a movement uh, allowance. That is the number of movement points they may spend each turn and frankly it's basically the number of hexes they may move unless they enter restricted water. So we know that all the units that we can see there have a movement allowance of four. That means they can move four hexes as I stated. The two units up in the uh, upper Part of the screen are located in an air base and port in Syria. They're going to move down and rendezvous with the destroyer force off uh, offshore southwest uh, of Lebanon. So, stacking for s naval units, both subs and surface units, is three. Uh, for air units, it's six. I'm not sure why they include submarines in the stacking limit, but they do. So, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and move the destroyer units. Move them together or in a stack, it doesn't matter. Um, like I said, this would be post-combat, so we'll move him one, we'll move him two, then we'll move him three. We have two units stacked there now. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and move the other Soviet unit. It has a uh, movement uh, movement point allowance of four. Sorry, one, two, three. So I have three Soviet units there in that stack. The stack is now at the maximum limit, and that's pretty much all there is to movement. I can show you. Uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate a. Uh, a restricted water hex movement. Okay, let's uh, look at it a little bit more detailed movement example. On the right hand side we have Turkish forces. They have some air units here, surface naval units here, there's also a subsurface uh, unit there, a submarine, and there's also a submarine up here. They're matched up against Greek forces who have air assets here, a couple of surface naval units here, and a surface naval unit here, Thessaloniki. The other one's down here in Athens. So we're just going to pretend that this X up here is the goal. Um, that way if they, the goal is to break through the Dar Dardanelles past Istanbul into the Black Sea and control that route. Uh, okay, that so route. Um, we're going to say the first player is uh, even or odd, even. Yeah, let's roll it again. I need to pick, I need to say who it is before I roll it, don't I? Um, even is Greece. It is odd, so the Turks will be the first player. So what they're going to do is each of these hexes that are light blue are restricted water hexes. They cost two movement points to enter. There's three open sea areas, or open, yeah, open sea areas here that are deep water or whatever, what they call high seas hexes. They will cost one movement point per hex. Aircraft pay one movement point per hex regardless of terrain. They are not restrained by any type of terrain. Um, so, they get to move first. They're going to go ahead and move their... Uh, well, combat would come first, so there's no combat, 
range is always one hex. Um, so they will forego any combat and they will move as the first player um, of the game turn. Because the sequence is, move, is combat then movement. So no combat. They are going to move, however. They're going to go one, two, and that's as far as they can move. They have a two strength. However, I think our best bet is probably not to move him at all. So we'll move the uh, surface group. Fastest unit there is a two. So we will move one, two. That's as far as the, that's as far as the Turkish units, naval units can move. We also have an air unit, which I think we will try to employ over here. This is an F-104, and they have an S-2 anti-submarine aircraft uh, beneath it. Uh, air units can go and stay up for one turn, but they must land in the next movement phase. Basically, they can be up and then stay during their opponent's uh, phase, and then they have to go back in their movement phase. So, with that said and done... I think we will throw the aircraft, uh, the F-105s, I say 5s or 4? Four? 4s, 104s, um, cover the uh, Turkish uh, surface group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Like I said, they can stay up this, stay up this turn, but the next friendly, by the next friendly turn they need to be uh, moving back towards a friendly base of theirs, <clears throat> which could be a carrier if it was a carrier based aircraft, and if they had a carrier, or a land air base, which is what they will have to do in this particular case. The anti sub unit, now I'm not quite sure how you'd want to use these. Well, with the combat sequence of play as it is, it seems to me like your subs would be, I don't know, it seems to me like the subs could always escape the uh, unit. Unless the sub wasn't going to move, I'm not quite sure how they would uh, effectively employ a unit like this, but let's go ahead and see. She can only go five hexes though, so that's not a very good radius. But, if she's still adjacent, she could probably find an air base to go to. Well, let's move her out towards an enemy unit and see what happens. I guess you could go one, two, three and just hover over the victory hex. And if a sub moves into that hex, it has no anti-air capability. And the Turkish unit could then uh, engage any subs that might be in that hex. So anyway, that's an example of movement for the Turks. Now we will go to the, the bottom half for the turn, player two. He has a combat phase. Um, there's nothing that he can attack at this time. And then he has a movement phase. Um, player two is the Greek player. We're going to move there. F-104. One, two, three. And engage the uh, Turkish air unit. <clears throat> Remember all attacks... Well, we'll engage them next turn. All attacks are made um, from top of the stack to the bottom of the stack. So, And then you can only change stack composition uh, during a friendly movement phase. So there's no combat for the Greeks either. All they can do is move. That's going to take some getting used to um, moving before attacking. Then we shall, I believe... Straighten up my stack there a little bit. We're going to fly their anti subunit, their S. Actually, this is a what? Oh, just dropped whatever it is. And it's an H16. Never heard of it. Anyway, it's going to fly out. Looks like it has a very good uh, radius or whatever. One, three, four. And they'll land on top of the Soviet subunit. 
Soviet subunit will, of course, either attack and then move away during, or Soviet, I say Soviet, uh, shame on me, the Turks. We'll see what happens uh, during the Turkish move, combat movement phase. All right, the other thing for the Greeks is they're going to go ahead and move these units. One, two, three, into this hex. The hex where all the action is going to be. And he, this unit, this Greek unit, destroyer, escort, can only move two, so he can move one hex. So that is an example of movement. I'm going to come back, we'll do an example of combat. Okay, let's do a quick uh, example of combat just to show you how combat works. Combat comes before the movement phase. We're going to say that the Turkish players turn is up next and they engage in combat before movement. So here we have an F-104 and a destroyer escort and at the bottom is the sub versus a Greek F-104 or yeah F-104 a Greek destroyer and another Greek destroyer. Units attack from top to bottom Turkish player is the aggressor in this particular situation. If you do not have a factor, all units must attack all adjacent units if they if they can. In other words, they have to have an attack factor that can uh, engage in that particular type of attack. If not, you proceed on down the uh, stack. In this case, this F-104 can engage that F-104. And this game uses a differential system. That's also something I have to keep in mind. I keep call, I keep wanting to do I keep wanting to do uh, an odds based ratio. So we have what do we have? We have sixteen factors minus the defense of four, which is going to give us twelve. So that's going to be on the plus twelve column. We're going to run over here and take a look at combat results table. Across the top, you'll see the differential strengths. We're going to be at the uh, we're going to be in the ten um, row. It looks like, and we're going to roll versus the units uh, ECM, which is going to be on the left hand side of the left hand side column on the left hand side of the map, board, chart, whatever. Alright, the ECM value is 1 on the, just got to run away to die, the ECM value is a 1, so we're going to be rolling up at the top of that chart on the 10 column. I need a 1 through 3 to cause a retreat, a die roll of a 1, 2, 3 to cause a retreat of that aircraft. We just roll a six, which, there it is, is a no effect. If I had scored a hit, then the defending unit would have to retreat. And in this series, or in this game, air units that have to retreat are eliminated, which I find entirely preposterous. So my house rule is to send them back to the nearest base within range, or the nearest eligible base within range. I do not see air units just dissolving because they have a retreat. And if I had rolled a 1 to 3, that would have been the result. So you have to basically take the differential versus the ECM. It'll give you a range of numbers, and you will try to roll equal to or less than that range of numbers to cause a retreat. And like I said, uh, it's really weird. Like this system is based after, oh, like the old Napoleon at Waterloo type system by SS or SPI, in which units retreat, have zones of control. It's basically a land-based model that has been grafted, not grafted, but that has been designed as a naval. Um, to represent a naval model. And it really shows there can be lots and lots of house rules that you could apply to this game if you wanted to, such as detection, 
um, variable combat results, not just retreat, but damage, and then retreat, or whatever, an attritional type of system. It could also use a logistics system, and um, well, you could just pretty much play with this as you want. It's basically a game design kit. All right, so they, he's already done his combat. He's no longer affected at the moment. Then we have this destroyer escort. It has to attack. It has to attack the first unit because it has an anti-air of six, and the um, 104 has a defensive four again. So it's going to be six minus fours on the plus two column. And well, yeah, plus two. The ECM of the defender is once again a one, which is basically the worst you can get. So we we'll roll. We get a cock die. Roll again. It's a three. And what did he have for strength? Um, six. Six minus what was that? One is a plus five. We roll the three. I needed a three, so that makes the aircraft retreat. So, in the game turns, he's gone. But, to me, the Greek unit just aborts and goes back to a friendly air base in range. Try to take this up just a little bit. So, the friendly Greek air unit just flies back up to here. Retreats do not destroy aircraft, I'm afraid. <laughs> Alright, so, he's committed, uh, he's uh, done his combat. Then we have the subunit. Subunit does not, well, there is no air to attack. Subunit does not have an anti air, but it does have an anti ship strength. So, in this case, it has to attack at least one unit um, that it can legally attack, and I guess that's going to be the destroyer. So, it would take its 10 minus the destroyer's defense of 4, and that's going to be a plus uh, 6. Yeah, that's right. Plus six, so we'll be rolling on the five table versus an ECM of two. Roll the five, that's not going to do anything. Two to plus five, no. So that's basically how combat works. That's it. These guys all go back on the map board, move him out of the way, sub at the bottom, then the surface, then the air. These units would have been like adjacent, remain adjacent. If I had rolled equal to or less than the uh, range of numbers needed to cause retreat, then you would have seen these guys just go back here, or over here, or down here, you know. Then, in pure uh, land based game form there's advance after combat so I could have advanced the unit there advanced the sub into there and the air unit just stays there all by its lonesome I think I don't think they can advance after combat so the next turn they could be attacked all by themselves by uh, Greek air if they wanted to or whatever so let's say it is the next turn it's the next turn Turkish movement the air unit has to return to an air base within range or it's eliminated. That I don't have a problem with. So it would have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and it could land at that air base. So anyway, if I wanted to add some flavor to it, I'd have a turnover rate, you know, that it wouldn't be able to fly again until a certain amount of time had gone by. I think each turn is eight hours, if I remember correctly. Yeah, eight hours, so. Um, it would have to be, I don't know, repair, maintenance, and uh, rearmament. You know, it could fly many sorties in that eight hour period. However, you know, it represents more than one aircraft. So, one thing I really love is the Europa slash Third World War game system that GDW um, has for their air units, in that you have to roll a die in order to see if you get those units back from the, you know, landed, grounded, already performed mission boxes to uh, to the ready box. That's something I'd like to see this game cover as well. But anyway, that is the two major systems I've demonstrated. Um, perhaps not too well and not too clearly, but 
you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, I've still got about 300 games to go through, and I'm not getting any younger. So anyway, I'll try to show you another game next time, uh, maybe in a little bit more depth.